No. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, this is all. Laura is a green card holder. A lot of things happen in the meantime, including the arrival of the the green card in this envelope, and then we got um, my work authorization, and after. Hi guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're doing the part two of green card interview experience for 2020. It was the application for my uh, green card through marriage to a US citizen. So we're gonna go through all the questions that the officer asked us and everything from the beginning to the end of the interview because a lot of you ask for specific questions and all the list and we have it written down. So we walked in after we cut the video we ended up there we walked into the building we were kind of late so we didn't have time to film everything but um uh, we got into the door there and mm -hmm. um we we saw this huge line there were so many people and um we were worried because we ended up getting there 10 minutes before so um there was um there was this person who was guiding uh, the line and he said we can go to another door and there were no people there. So we got lucky. We got in in a minute after that. Yeah, he said, what time's your appointment? We said, what was it, 12.30 or something? 12.30. But yeah, we were there at like 12.20. So he's like, yeah, yeah, pass the line, go through security. And then we went upstairs and checked in. We were afraid we were going to be too late. It was all fine. And then we waited 45 minutes to an hour, I'd say. Yes. After that, we heard the name, our... Um, last name being called and so we followed this pretty young lady officer into a maze to get to her office and then once we got there she closed the door and asked for our names and for IDs so I presented my Florida ID because that's uh, where I I had my um, program for school because I entered with F1 visa and uh, I got to do my ID there. I was trying to get a driver's license here in California. I was not able to. And I had to explain a little bit the situation and she was fine with that. And then what documents did you present for your ID identification? I think I just did my passport and then later she asked for my birth certificate. And I had my social security card, which wasn't necessary, but I had it just in case, which I would say bring it. And um, so after that, she started to ask questions about me, how I first entered into the country, how come I was there. And I said, uh, I entered through F1 visa. She wanted to see the page, um, the visa page sticker on my passport. I show her that. And she also asked for um, the DS 2019, it's called that document shows what school you attended and all the details of your program and i showed her that and uh, she also wanted the proof that i attended the university and um, ended up asking for my transcript i did not have it i was really not prepared for that no i forgot but um but matt said oh you you have something else so i took the id and mm -hmm. i showed that to her the ID, the, the student ID basically, and she was fine with that. And um, she proceeded asking questions about my previous visas, entries in the country. And I had to, um, two previous entries and three previous visas. So I explained, I showed, um, so I showed visas and remember to bring your old passport because my first two visas were in my old passport. So I showed that to her and I also brought the DS 2019s for every one of them. And that was good. She liked that. Um, there were no additional questions for uh, supporting documents for that. Um, she also asked when I left the country. So be prepared with some dates. Like maybe you don't remember the, the day, but if you have a month and a year, that should be fine. I explained why I left every time I left, and then she saw that one of my J-1 visas had the, the 212E section, which is that requirement for two year going back to your home country. And uh, she asked me if I waived that, and I did. So I had the document, I showed that to her. That document is priceless, you have to have it with you at the interview. 
if you had that section in the past bring the waiver if you don't have the waiver that's gonna be a lot more complicated so other questions for me were um if i ever worked in america in the past and i said yes and uh, she asked for documentation on that so i had um on my previous j1 visa i was employed by an interior design company and i showed my new ds 2019 showing that company there listed uh, so she asked what was um and the company's domain of activity and what have I studied in my home country and um, the two domains match so I think that was good then that was all the questions related to me uh, we had done a request for additional documents for uh, adjustment of status because of the um, what, what would I call it like the financial situation yeah, because I need to have proof that I could support her in the meantime before she has a right to work. So I had to submit pay stubs, but then I became self-employed about a month after we got married. Not self-employed, but started a company. <clears throat> and um, so I, I didn't have pay stubs anymore because I, I haven't set up payroll with my company yet. And so... I showed them bank account statements and that wasn't good enough. <clears throat> and then we were, I was able to show the lady in person invoices from clients I billed and she was fine with that. But it was a little bit more complicated than if I just had a job and had a consistent pay stub. Yeah, don't forget to bring all those additional documents that you might think they're not important. They are. And then that was it with questions like related to you i think she also asked where was he born she looked on the birth certificate but she also asked i think right yeah so yeah that was it easy and then questions about us first question where did we meet and we said we met at the birthday party i was invited there and then he showed up and we um we met there yeah and she asked how long after we met, we started dating. And for that, we said that... That we had, we kept in contact. We went on our first date a little less than a week after. And then we went on a few more and then it just became a relationship. Wish, she, wish we had an exact date, but... Yeah, we don't. June. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it June. Um... She asked about the wedding, if we had the ceremony, and uh, how many people attended, right? Mm -hmm. We said it was a small wedding, and she's like, why so small? It's like, well, we decided to do a small wedding, and that's what we like. we'll, we'll have a bigger one later, so her family could attend in Romania. She asked if he met my family, <clears throat> and... Um, he only met my father very briefly, and we said just that, and it was it was fine. Um, yep, we saved flight tickets we had together when I came to visit you in Romania. Um, our road trip we did before you left the U.S. I think we had the ho yeah we had the hotel from there. We had lots of supporting documents of all the things we've done together, which is a lot. And we had a lot of photos. Most people just do that binder with um, in separate, like a photo album. We did not do that. We just had printed photos individually. It was, was it four by six inches, something yeah, like that? Yeah, four by six photos. And then you wrote on the back about the date, like I think just the month and the year, and then who we were with. And she liked that. She kept all the photos, so we'll have to reprint. Yeah. It was a lot of information on those. It's pretty clear what happened and how we spent time together and how close we are. And then uh, she asked for another other set of supporting documents, which we already talked about in the previous video. And we showed for that the lease of the leasing um, document and then a banking statement for the joint uh, banking account we have. And... Um, 
What else? She asked what we that used the it, account for. And yeah. We should have brought the cell phone bill that had both of our names on it. And we had the power bill as well. That was one. So that was it with the questions. It, they didn't separate us. All the interview took place together. We were on one side of the desk and she was on the other side while she was asking us questions. She was typing stuff on her computer, checking, and she also had a printed file. Everything we sent out, all the applications were in a huge file printed there. And I think there were the actual papers we mailed. They were they, all they together. Were. Yeah. Our file was shipped from from us, Lee Summit, Missouri. That's where the cases started to be processed. It was mailed here to Los Angeles where we had the interview. And yeah. all the documents we had after that, they were added to the, the folder. I should mention that she took, um, she took some of the papers we brought with us and she took a photocopy and added to that um, folder. And she proceeded to ask all those questions at the end of the um, application for adjustment of status. Like, are you a terrorist? Do you have a... Uh, have you ever killed anybody all those questions she asked me i answered to everything have you been to jail were you part of the military in your home country all that stuff yeah those were the no uh, at the end we had the que i had a question of uh, are you part of any organization and i said yes but it was something humanitarian so she wrote it down clarifications on what's the organization about and um that was it at the end she was um she made up her mind pretty fast after she said that she's gonna check my criminal record and if everything checks out then the cases will be approved yeah. right she said it's approved as long as the criminal background goes through which i guess we didn't find out anything about you we didn't already know it was all good there <laughs> But I think I think the biggest things that convinced her was all the photos we had together, all the documentation of flights and hotel and things that bound us together, and then the fact that my family was at our wedding. Yes. That it wasn't just us and friends or something. Yeah. Um, having family there is good. And we had so many photos. And it was just us. We were... We were not represented by anybody. We did all the paperwork ourselves. And um, even though most of the questions were addressed to me, I did not ask for an interpreter to come with us. So I guess I had one. <laughs> so mm, Slightly. You, you get along. You do better than I do sometimes. I had so, some of the questions were not worded how I would understand them. So I had to ask again the question. But she didn't get frustrated. It was all good. And uh, yeah, that was our experience. I hope this video is more useful and more detailed than the previous one. And if you have more questions, I can answer and we can answer in uh, future videos. Maybe yeah. you want to find out about how is the life after you have the green card or um, what, it, what it means to have that work authorization, how you can use it. What are the next steps that you have to do to like apply for uh, different documents that you need? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much.